What's going on, socialites? Ryan here, Commissioner, Global Pokemon Society, here for another episode of GPS Tracking, your podcast for everything you need to know about the Global Pokemon Society and all things Pokemon news in general. So, kind of going to just be free-forming this one. No interviews this week. Been really busy. So busy. I need a haircut. I need to shave. Oh, I'm a mess. But, yeah. We'll get through it. So, week three in the books for the Draft League. A little bit of Pokemon Unite news for today. And uh, some transaction news for the league. So, first, we'll hop right into the Pokemon Unite news. This is coming out Wednesday, September 22nd. And that means that Pokemon Unite is now on mobile. If you've linked the switch and the mobile you can get the pikachu for free with the hollowware some people are having some problems redeeming this but it is a known issue it will be fixed just if you're already playing on switch and you want to keep that account just make sure you link the two and you can claim it on the mobile and if you're playing in mobile for the first time comment down below let me know what you thought of that a lot of uh, balance changes probably do a video about those in the near future, no Mammoth Swine, no Sylveon um, released, which is a little bit surprising, but you know, I think they made some good changes. Um, and of course, we got another battle pass. I did not get to finish the first battle pass, I kind of got burnt out this last month, so uh, I was only like 10 or so levels away, but that that's my fault. That's your boy's fault. We'll, we'll get back into it because I gotta say, while Pirate Cinderace looked cute. This Space Gengar looks legit, so we're gonna look into uh, making sure that we get Space Gengar. Uh, honestly, more for the Space Ghastly. The Ghastly version of this costume looks um, really cute. Really nice. So yeah, that's kind of it for Pokemon news this week. Um, Unites on mobile, big stuff. A lot of changes to, again, try to do a video this week and going over all that, but I'm sure you can get the information somewhere else you don't gotta wait for me all right let's take a look now at the draft league following week three we still got a bunch of teams at three and oh i don't think any um teams that were two and oh lost so all the two oh teams moved up to three oh we got denver in sole possession first place with 16 points pittsburgh right behind them Right behind them is Black City and your Boston Braviers. Right behind them is Memphis. So all these teams, only within a couple points of each other, all 3-0. and Good stuff there. Moving down to our 2-2 two and two teams, we see PSG at 2-1 and one with 11 points. Very good. Vero, 2-1. and one. And Charm City at 2-1. and one. Vero gained the edge on Charm City because they do have that extra game win in their match and El Paso also two and one but got a little stomped on from Denver so they lost a lot of differential points their first two games that they won were really close oh yeah so they were the 2-0 and team that lost so I stand uh, I stand corrected All right, I'm gonna sit back down wrong all right going to the one two teams Lavender Town finally gets a win trying to proved me wrong by saying that they were a good team starting off 0-2. So they get a win. Tokyo at 1-2. Oklahoma gets their first win. They're at 1-2. They get to even on differential points. And Waco and Buffalo and Dragapult and the Mighty Psyducks round it all out. All of them at 1-2. and two. Still a lot of season left, so no, no one's quite out of it yet. And then we get to our 0-3 teams. Four 0-3 teams. You know, uh, some some of these teams are going to start playing each other. So I, we won't have this many. Might might be a while, though. We'll have to see how they kind of maneuver. But the Diamond Desert Dwellers at 0-3. But they got two, two game wins. So they are putting up a fight in their losses. Slateport at 0-3. And then... 
all the way down at the bottom we got seattle and daytona the seattle shiny sylveons and the daytona colossals all the way down in the cellar so they they got some work to figure that out there all right so that's the standings recap let's take a look now at the trades and the free agents that were picked up this week before we go into the top 10 pokemon after week three so this was the first week we could do free agents and we saw 12 out of the 20 teams do some sort of trade or free agency pickup we have them up here boston braviaries picking up obstagoon and frostmoth from the c tiers charm city makes a move they pick up whimsicott from the s tier and vicavolt from the c tier daytona picking up blastoise from the a tier Diamond Desert Dwellers picking up Gothitel from the A tier and Lilligant from the B tier. The Dragapults get Excadrill from the A tier and Skuntank from the C tier. El Paso, E Electros picking up Crawdont from the C tier. The Lavender Town Gengars, they trade their X tier pick for Giratina and their S tier pick, so their top two picks. Their S tier for Lander Assyrian, and they make a trade to Pittsburgh, getting Reggie Drago in return. We'll talk about that a little bit more coming up. Memphis getting the B tier Butterfree as a support. Oklahoma making a bunch of changes, getting A tier Celesteela, B tier Crocodile, and C tier Frostlass. Pittsburgh, they pick up C tier Vanillix, and in exchange for Reggie Drago from Lavender Town Gengars, they get Arcanine. So real big pickup for them there. Tokyo getting S tier Regigigas and A tier Galarian Weezing getting that slow start neutralizing gas combo right there. And Vero Beach picks up B tier Alolan Persian and C tier Hitmonlee getting a little bit of fake out and other support there. So while we got this up, uh, we polled the coaches about some questions regarding some of these moves so we'll just go over that real quick so the only x tier that was moved was lavender town dropping kieran black for giratina so we asked if they liked it or not majority said they liked the swap about 63 percent while the other you know kind of one third so you could say two thirds like the other one said they they would have still dropped kieran but picked up something else then looking at the S tier swaps, we had a few. Um, the favorite ones were getting Whimsicott instead of Urshifu for Charm City. And they also liked Lavender Town picking up Landers, Tyrion, and dropping Regieleki. We also asked about Tokyo dropping Grimmsnarl and picking up Regigigas. That was a 50 50 split. But there was nobody that didn't like any of them, so that's good. All found something positive. The A tiers, real big support for Driftvale City Dragapults picking up Excadrill and dropping Dracovish. Almost a 88% favorable rating from the coaches. Daytona got about a two thirds, so 66% rating for trading Blastoise and dropping Politoed. I mean, I think that was a little bit more impactful because Politoed wasn't going to really do anything on that team. So I think that was a more impactful trade. I mean, Dragovish and Excadrill kind of fulfill the same role. Um, of course, Excadrill is a better Dynamax option. And then Oklahoma dropping Clefairy and picking up Celesteela. This only got a 37% approval rating, so pretty low. Diamond Desert dropping Milotic for Gothitelle only got 25% approval rating, which I don't mind that one. I, I think that's fine. I mean, as a Sun team, you, you could still hold on to Milotic kind of as support, but I think Gothitelle does a lot for you. Trick Room and uh, Fake Out, you know, it, it, it can do some things helping hand. It, it can support. And Tokyo dropping Umbreon and picking up Galarian Weezing also only got 25%. Kind of interesting. I know that they were kind of split on Reggie Gigas, 50% approval rating. But you figure if you're going to like picking up Reggie Gigas, then you got to like picking up Galarian Weezing. The only 
other thing would be maybe they just thought regular wheezing was better as you are not weak to steal with the regular wheezing. All right, as for the teams that made no moves, now again, 12 out of the 20 teams made moves. So that means eight teams didn't make moves. Uh, the one that was most surprising, coaches said, was Denver. About 50% of the teams were surprised Denver didn't make any moves. As for that, the rest of them were all pretty negligible percentages, and no one was surprised that PSG, Paris saint germain made any moves. Of course, they're kind of stuck. They're trying to do a Gen 8 team. Here at the Boston Braves, we're doing a Gen 8 team, which is like... Hard mode, he, he's trying to go like expert hard mode or something with this Gen 2 team. Next, I asked the coaches about the trade, which was Reggie Drago from Pittsburgh going to the Lavender Town Gengars and Lavender Town sending Arcanine to the Pittsburgh Poltegeist. 50% of those polls said that it was an even trade, and then the other 50% were split 25 and 25, both thinking the other team won the trade. I gotta say, I'm on the side that I think Pittsburgh won this trade. Arcanine is just such a good support Pokemon, and it can still pose an offensive threat. Um, I know, you know, Lavender Town probably didn't want three Intimidators with Landorus, Gyarados, and Arcanine. But you don't need Gyarados to be Intimidate. You can try to run a Moxie set, or you could just get rid of Gyarados as well. I think Arcanine is just very, very good. Um... And I know Alex said when he looked at the draft that when he saw Arcanine in the B tier, he um, valued him almost more than some of the A tiers, like a lot of the A tiers, he said. So to value that and then to trade it for Reggie Drago, which was Pittsburgh's last pick, and I had to kind of like suggest it to them just as like, a, hey, this is still there, I guess. Um, yeah, just a, a, an interesting trade. Definitely giving a lot of power to Pittsburgh, I think, for sure. Then we asked which team won the week for transactions. 50% of those polled said that Tokyo won the week for transactions. So again, th this must have been the 50% that liked getting Regigigas. I'm still surprised, though, that 50% liked Regigigas, but only 25% liked picking up Galarian Weezing. So some of these numbers don't exactly add up. But I didn't, you know, ask people to write why they thought this way. And which team lost the week for transactions or lack thereof. So we included some of the teams that made no moves. And the Seattle Shiny Sylveons got a 50% for losing the week. So people wanted them to make moves. Uh, they were right behind Denver in teams that people were surprised didn't make any moves. But, I mean, Denver's 3-0. and So, you know, you can't blame them too much for that. All right, with that said now, let's take a look at the top performing Pokemon. Try to get this all squared away here. All right, so the top performing Pokemon following week three right here pouring on with a huge week now it does help he has played seven games so that is quite a lot of games compared to some of these other pokemon on this list but 14 ko's really i think he got eight ko's this past week so he was the ko machine for oklahoma skyrocketing at least in this early part of the season to the top of the top pokemon list we see suicune and charizard you know, a distant second place with 9 KOs. Charizard, of course, on the 0-3 Diamond Desert Dweller. So he's played 8 games, even more so than Porygon, but he's died 7 times. So got to remember that as well. You know, the KD ratio isn't exactly in Charizard's benefit. And he is the offensive threat for the struggling Desert Dwellers. Hatterene... From the Boston Braviaries and Calyrex Shadow Rider for Pittsburgh. Both with 8 KOs and only 1 feint. So they're proven strong with a very healthy um, KD ratio. Metagross and Zapdos. 
from Black City and Waco respectively, 8 KOs, 2 faints, Mewtwo from the Vera Beach Volcarona with 8 KOs and 4 faints, so those are 8 KO Pokemon. Landorus Tyrion being picked up just this week by Laventer Down Gengars, so missing 2 weeks, coming in week 3, already cracking into the top 10 best Pokemon here. With 7 KOs and not dying at all. So talk about a good kill-death ratio. And then Bisharp from Black City rounds it out. Black City, the only team with two Pokemon on this list at 7 and 2. So with that, that just about wraps it up here. You know, let me know if you got any favorites right now after week 3 going forward in the draft league let me know if you'll be playing pokemon unite on mobile or if you'll be getting back into it uh i know i definitely want to play some more we are doing a unite i don't know what where they call them squads they add squads now so kind of like clans or whatever so hopefully we'll get a bunch of the coaches on that and make matchmaking a little bit easier but yeah thanks guys sorry that this wasn't like as prepared as usual just super busy but appreciate the support make sure you hit that like button make sure you're subscribed leave a comment about anything that we talked about really helps and as always stay classy society